What's up, everyone? It's Wayne Mephedasen from Holistic Songwriting. How's it going? Welcome to this new podcast on music theory, again, with my good buddy Corey from 12 Tone. That's 12, the number, not the letters. You can find them <laughs> on YouTube, and I suggest you subscribe to that page because it's an amazing uh, YouTube channel. Welcome, Corey. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, good to have you here, man. Um, so in this episode, I thought we could talk a little bit more about modality and what it means for pop music, how it is different from tonal harmony or um, functional harmony, I should say, and uh, how we can use it for, you know, writing better pop songs. Um, but before we get into that, uh, I think we had to, a couple of smaller things that we wanted to get out first. I think you had a, like a little correction to make for last episode or yeah. something? Yeah, in the last episode we were talking about uh, dominant substitutions, just different chords you could use instead of the five. And I was talking about something I was borrowed from Harmonic Locrian. And if you don't didn't listen to that podcast, don't worry about what that means. But the point is, I said that the chord you could use was the flat seven, flat five major seven, and that is incorrect. the The chord that I should have said was flat five major seven sus four, because that's the suspension is how you get that leading tone back in. So I just just wanted to clear that up. Uh, it just it's and it's a great sound. I highly recommend you play around with it. But I just I just wanted to make sure I was saying the right chord. You know. We also got a, a comment last uh, last time we did this, and uh, I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, I can't really pronounce the name, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> but it's something Eastern European, is my guess. Um, and he says it is interesting to test your skill when you're trying to follow these geeks and trying to actually play <laughs> what they're talking about. For me, it works on half speed. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just thought it was funny. Anyways. Yeah. So, and that is the problem with the, you know doing this stuff without like sitting at a piano or with a guitar or something is to like we're talking about chords with the names, but yeah. you're not actually hearing the chords, and I, it can exactly. be hard. And that's that's why I do audio examples in my videos, and you do as well. But this is sort of a more casual conversation, and it's harder to do that. Uh, there were a couple of instances where we like had to slow down because it is audio, yeah. and uh, it is this it is a very abstract thing that we're talking about here. So I yeah. think it's good and, if we just like slow everything down a little bit and i think yeah. this comment is maybe a good uh, indicator that <laughs> good thing uh, to keep in mind yeah 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 exactly yeah all right so what we wanted to talk about today um modality and um yeah i mean i have a lot of uh, thoughts on this as well but I'd, I'd love to hear first of all what do you think about modality do you use it in your songs or are you like really a functional harmony kind of guy so there's sort of a couple different things that i don't hear the word modality applied to and i'm not entirely sure which one you're talking about the sort of are you talking about just like the modes like ionian dorian um like the, that the sorts of different scales because that oh, we can talk about that but the other thing that i tend to think of as as modality is uh like the color of a scale sort of a more broad analytical thing where you can sort of say like this what here's a scale what other scales is it like and sort of how how do you go in and sort of say like okay this like lydian for instance lydian isn't the major scale right mm -hmm. it's very clearly it's not the major scale it has a sharp four it is a but major it's definitely scale. it's definitely a major scale you know yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly it, it's it's in that family and you can sort of go look and be like okay dorian isn't the minor scale but it's minor yeah. and so how how do you differentiate that and how do you do that at a more complex level as well how do you sort of look at different scales and say like okay this is like phrygian is phrygian kind of like locrian well that depends how much like that that depends on how you're looking at things but there's sort of going and looking at like what what makes the sound of a scale and sort of how do you how do you define a scale's color in a broader sense than just saying it's this set of notes yeah exactly that, that's, that's sort of it's kind of yeah. both of those things that's what i see it as I, so for, for me okay. but it's not just like the scales but also the underlying chords of course so what chords yeah. come with you know, those scales. Yeah. Yeah. So I think maybe we could start with just the basic idea of what, a, what modes are. Maybe you could explain that real sure. quick before we get into like what each okay. different uh, scale is called yeah. and what they sound like a little bit more. Yeah. So modes, broadly speaking, uh, modes are when you take a parent scale, usually the major scale, and you take all the notes of that scale, but you play them in a slightly different order so that you have a different note that sounds like the root. So, for instance, if you're playing, say, D major, you have D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> but if you go to, say, B minor, B minor has all those same notes, but you play it like B is the root. And that gives you a different color. And there's, I do want to, because 8-Bit Music Theory, I don't know if you know their channel, but yeah, they did a video oh, recently about modes as well. And they were saying, you know, people always explain it in that way. It's like you take the parent scale and you play the notes differently, and then they just stop. 
And that, that's, that's what a mode is. And that's not, he, he was arguing that that isn't enough. And I tend to agree. A, a big part of that question is, okay, but what does that sound like? What gives it, what does that feel like? Like is when, if you add, if you go to say Lydian, Lydian isn't just the major scale starting on the four. I mean, it is that, but it's also this bright dreamy sound because you have that raised fourth that removes we, a lot we, of the tension. Hold on, before we, before we get to that, could we, um, um, I think we maybe rushed through that a little bit too quickly. Yes, so, um, <laughs> probably right. <laughs> but, so um, again, so basically the idea is, um, I'm, maybe I'm just going to repeat no, basically what you said. So if you, in the right hand, for example, just play a C major scale, right? Yeah. But it, that C major scale is going to sound different depending on what chord you play in the left hand. So yeah. if I play a C major chord in the left hand, well, you got C major or what we call C Ionian, right? That's the name of the mode. Yeah. But if we play an A minor in the left hand, you can play those exactly same, exactly those same notes, but the whole thing is not going to sound happy like a major scale anymore. It's going to sound like a minor scale. Yeah. And that is because the center of that key, of that scale that you're playing has changed to A, and that means you're playing A Aeolian. That's another yeah. fancy name. That's the mode name, the the old yeah. uh, ancient name for uh, a minor, and that means depending on what chord you play in the left hand, the scale in the right hand is always going to sound different, even if you play the exact same notes. And so that's why uh, a lot of people say the bassist is the most powerful <laughs> player in every band because they just basically determine the emotion of the notes that you're playing. Right? That's, they yeah. determine what the what the piano player you, sounds like. They determine yeah. what the singer sounds like. They determine what all of those notes sound like because the relationship between the notes in the scale or in the melody to the bass changes. And that means we get different emotions. Yeah. And uh, so if you think about that a little bit, then you'll figure out that, hey, wow, there's actually, so 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 we have C major and we have A minor. Like those are the scales I know. That's Ionian, Aeolian or major minor. But what about all of those other chords? What happens when I pl- press an F, an F major in the left hand or an E minor, something like that? Yeah. And so that's where all of these modes come in. So for example, if we press an F major in the left hand, this is what we could, uh, consider Lydian. So the notes in the right hand will belong to a scale that we call Lydian, F Lydian in this case. Yeah. And uh, so they each have their own names. And um, maybe I, I have a couple of uh, mnemonics I use to remember them. But um, so basically that's that's kind of how it works. So yeah. depending on what bass you play in the left hand or on the on the bass guitar or what chord you play, the notes that you're playing for your melody have a, get a different kind of emotion. Yeah, they create and a different so, sense of it's different feel. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so the um, the emotion uh, that you that you have in the melody is highly dependent of the scale that that melody is coming from, the mode that that melody yeah. is coming from. And so every mode, Aeolian and and uh, Ionian, so minor and major, obviously are very yeah. very different in, in terms of emotion. Those are, those are very different scales. Yeah, and uh, the other scales are also. Um, quite different. So it's it's useful for a songwriter to to learn those different emotions so you can um, find them in your songs. So uh, one example I'm going to give is from my own work as a film composer and a video games music composer is that when I, for example, I'm scoring like a dream sequence or something like that, then I will go to Lydian because Lydian, as you said, has that raised four, yeah. that sharp four, which makes it sound kind of dreamy. And we'll talk about a little bit more about what these different emotions are for every scale. But um, that's essentially it. Like if I know like, hey, this is supposed to sound dark and this is supposed to sound heavy, then maybe I'm going to go for Aeolian, so minor, or yeah. maybe I'm going to go for Phrygian if I want to yeah, go even probably. darker. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you wanted something that sounded a little, a little dark, but more like upbeat and uh, I tend to think of like folky, you might go for like Dorian where Dorian is a minor scale, but it doesn't feel dark in the way that the other minor scales do because it has that, has, has that major fourth, uh, four chord. It has the major sixth degree and it just, it feels Mm -hmm. like it feels a bit brighter. So that would be, you know, another uh, thing you could do with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's um, let's maybe go through each uh, each uh, mode first of all, and talk about the different emotions that we associate with um, those scales. Okay, so um, let's start. So, so let's say we're just in C major because I think that's sure. easiest for most people trying to learn this. Uh, so we're playing a C major scale in the right hand, and now let's start on the C in the left hand. So we're just starting with like the very this very simplest note that you could play in the left hand. That is what we call Ionian. You might know it as major, but it basically means the same thing. Yeah, same thing. So, same thing. 
Exactly. So now is the question, what does this sound like? What are you, what are your suggestions on this? I mean, it's sort of hard to define what the major scale sounds like to me just because it's so common and it gets used in a lot of places. I mean, the, the short, simple answer is major sounds happy and bright, but I think that it also sounds, it has a tension to it. It has a little like, because you have the third and then the fourth right above it that's sort of hanging there and rubbing over that chord tone, you have this little sense of dissonance and that gives you I think, and more of a sense of, I get, I get like tension and more weight than you might get from some of the other modes that don't have that. So I think that it's it's easy to say that it's bright and it's easy but, to say that it's happy. And I think it's accurate, but don't uh, all modes have this this little rub of the the like? There's always two half step uh, rubs within every mode, right? Yes, but. In my experience, uh, the the notes that uh, that tend to sound the harshest are the notes that are a half step above a chord tone uh, so of, of, See, the, of the one chord. So you have in major, you have one, three, five, and then seven. But you know, uh, and then you have the four that's right above that third. Whereas if you look at say minor, you have the half step rub between like well, two and three. Flat six. You have the flat six. Yeah. I was, yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you have the flat six that's hanging there. Whereas in Dorian, you don't really have either of those. The rub is between, the, in both cases, it's a half step below a chord tone, not above it. So you yeah. get a little less of that tension because you have you have a little more of a consonant sound to it. And it feels a little more resolved. And yeah. so, um, in, in case you don't know, the intervals um, between or the, the, the different scales, so the intervals between the notes and the root note, in this case for major, for Ionian, are 1, 2, major, 3, uh, 4, natural 4. Uh, natural five, then major six, major seven, and you know the one again. Yeah, obviously so that's the octave. They all the have Ionian the octave. Stuff. Yeah, so that's Ionian for for me personally. I yeah, I use Ionian if I wanna if I wanna sound yeah, as you said, happy. It's got a very light feel to it. It's kind of like a a no brainer kind of scale. I find it sometimes a little bit difficult to use because it can sound quite naive. Uh, naive. That's yeah. the that's the word. Um, I, I, I said that, uh, <laughs> wrong in one of my YouTube videos and I'm still getting comments about that every day. But now <laughs> since I'm hearing it every day, people like making jokes about that, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind it, of yeah. learning it the wrong way. <laughs> um, so it's, it, it can be quite a challenge to write in it. And I find the easiest way to write in, in that scale in Ionian is to go into minor rather quickly. So one of my first moves I do after playing that one chord is probably go into six minor or into three minor because yeah. I just want to add a little bit more. Um, I really see it as realism into it. If I just stay within major, it can sound really like sort of superficial. Um, yeah. So that's like for most pop songs. And then yeah. there's other songs. If I try to sound a little bit bluesy or, or um, just really like pure fun, if I want it to sound like really straight out, like hilarious, or like <laughs> if I'm trying to write comedy or something like that, if, if those are the kind of emotions I'm going for, then I will probably stick with only major chords because yeah. I find like one minor chord can really change the whole atmosphere of, of the track. Yeah. And the thing with writing in major is that that's basically the environment that functional harmony was designed for. It's That's where you have the leading tone. That's where you have the major uh, fourth chord and you have Basically, everything that you're supposed to have in order to make functional harmony work. You have the four hanging over the three. You have everything. So it's when you're writing in major, that tends to be how I tend, or when I'm writing in major, that tends to be how I tend to think. I don't really think modally when I'm writing in Ionian or in major, just because yeah. it, it, it's so easy to use use functional harmony there. And it's just, like, like I said, that's what it's designed for. And that's that's where it thrives. So... If you're writing in major, that's I probably I, if you're writing in Ionian, I wouldn't tend to think modally at all. I would tend to lean towards functional approaches to things, and that might that would mean, for instance, going to the six minor or the three minor would be, you know, that would be going to another tonic chord that extends the sound of the one while adding some uh, additional uh, dissonance. What's the word? Um, this minorness, add, adding a different sound but keeping extending that tonic function. And so that that would be sort of what I would think of when I'm writing an Ionian or major. So yeah. So that's interesting because I really see it a very different way than you. Because when I'm writing in major, I mean, when I'm writing like film music or something like that, then I will do it as you said. Yeah. Um, but it has a very, 
It, it does have a classical sound because that's how classical music operated. It was really it was really based on that functional kind of harmony. But when I'm writing a pop song now, I mean, um, I think we've talked about this before, but like the, a typical kind of uh, cadence nowadays is the plagal cadence, the 4-1, yeah, one, one. right? Yeah. So, which is less strong than the 5-1, but the 5-1 always kind of sounds classical. So yeah. if I uh, write a chord progression uh, in major, I try to stay away from those really functional harmonies as much as I can. So even a 4-1, to me, isn't doesn't have like really that strong kind of a pull. So like a typical kind of chord progression is... Um, let's say one five six four. Yeah. You know, so then at the end we got the the wraparound of the four one, but it's still there's not not really any um relationship between the different chords. Like they they're not really leading into one another. But so, that's like the the most used formula yeah. for. So know, I'm not sure. I, 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 I tend to think you can you can sort of look at the one five six four as basically functional. If you're, I mean, one of the things that I tend to be an advocate for in a lot of my videos is the idea of sort of taking a broader step back and as with functional harmony and not applying it super literally all the time and being like you have to have five one or it's not functional so you see like things like plagal cadences those i think those are based on functions and also if you look at the one five uh, five six specifically that's that's a, a major uh, deceptive cadence yeah, deceptive cadence and you get this sense that it's like it's resolving to one except it's not quite because you know the six minor and the one chord share two of their notes in common and those are the notes that the five chord wants to resolve to so mm -hmm. you get this you, you sort of you still get that functional sound and then so it's like tonic dominant resolving back to tonic it's just not resolving back to the one chord and then you go to the subdom from tonic to subdominant and then you get that subdominant resolution which again isn't as strong but i still i still tend to view it as functional given that you have that like there's the four to three which is part of a dominant resolution you don't have the leading tone resolving but you still have sort of a weaker resolution. So that's, I, I, like I said, I would also think of that as functional. I don't necessarily think that you have to be going like one, four, five, one, four, five, one, four, five in order to be, in order to be functional harmony. That's, I don't know. That's just how I tend to think about it. Yeah. And I would agree with you there, but, um, I do have one counter example because I, I used to think like that very much myself, but then someone sent me, um, a song brave by Sarah Beret. Is that Sarah Bareilles? Yeah. Borellis? Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, that song actually has a very kind of common chord progression of like a very kind of functional harmony kind of chord progression, C, A minor, F, G. So that's uh, one, six, four, five, yeah. uh, which is, has that four, five, one. So that's like, you know, the full yeah. uh, cadence, um, super yeah. classical, should sound very classical. And uh, because I talked about this in one of my videos that I said, like, you kind of want to stay away from the four, five, one, because it has those very classical kind of undertones. Um, and, um, he wrote me this example of brave and said like, Hey, listen to this. Does this sound old fashioned to you? Cause it really doesn't to me. And, um, this is, I think a really in interesting example. And I think it's kind of, kind of goes a little bit deeper into what sounds modal and into what actually is modal. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're right. This isn't actually yeah. modal if you just look at the chords, but I think there's some, some other differences about how modal chords are played that kind of determine what it feels like. If it sounds modal, if it has, sounds yeah. very emotional, or if it sounds uh, functional, which has like a lot more direction where uh, we're sort of like progressing literally through the chord progression. Right? Yeah. And I, I, you would have to look at, I, or I would have to look at how that's voice led. And one, one thing that I might want to check, for instance, is what the inversions are. If the bass is playing uh, one, six, four, five, or if they're doing something different, I, I haven't analyzed this song, obviously. I don't, know any of this for sure but those would be things i would look at is just like does it have that like actual like four five one in the bass because that's going to sound pretty classical probably does it have what's it doing with the voice leading is that does it have leading tones resolving I, and again i would have to take a look but i think so i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure because it's been a while since i listened to this but i think it has both of those things um but it still kind of sounds modal to me. And here's, I think, why. And this is what I wrote back to him as yeah. well. There's a difference in horizontal versus vertical chord progressions. And so uh, horizontal meaning um, we're moving through the chord progression. That's kind of like, um, if you will, functional harmony, right? Yeah. We, so we have like melodies in the chords that are resolving tension release, that kind of thing. So we have one chord that has tension and then it resolves in the next chord. So that is a very horizontal kind of move, right? We're moving somewhere. We're always going somewhere. 
And then there's vertical chord progressions, which in the way I define it means uh, you look at every chord individually and every chord sort of delivers a new kind of emotion, delivers a new kind of sound, which is a very modal way of looking at chord progressions. I mean, it's, it's, the, it's worth recognizing that this is sort of, it's a sliding scale thing. You can't, it's, it's, you're, you're not, I don't think you're saying that there's no functionality to it or anything. It's not like they're True. dichotomies. Like there's either, it's either one or the other. It's, it's just, it doesn't really feel like it's in that sort of classical functional vein, even yes. though it has chords that you could say were. So, yeah. Exactly. So it doesn't feel like it. And I think the reason is because it's so, the, the chord changes happen so slowly. So I think it's yeah. like, a. I mean, it's at least one bar before we get a chord change, or maybe it's two bars or the tempo is very slow. So I find chord progressions sound more functional if the chord changes are really fast, like, you know, classical kind of jazz, if you will, yeah. has a lot of chord changes. So it, you can really hear those melodies interweaving in the chords. But if you have something like where for like one or two bars, you just get one chord, then you really can sort of appreciate more the different textures of that chord before it changes. Yeah. And so when you have that change, that resolution isn't, I mean, it's still there, but it isn't that important anymore because it's just like, oh, what is this new chord bringing to the table? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, the harmonic rhythm is super important in terms of like how fast the chords change because... Again, like you said, it's just sort of if you have if you have like a like five ten seconds of one chord, that's a lot of time to sort of sit there and absorb that one sound, and then you go to the next one. Whereas, you know, if in that five seconds you're playing like five different chords, it feels more like you're moving, and so you're watching more the motion rather than each individual stop along the way. But, exactly. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And so that's I think where we have to like make a little bit of a distinction between. Um, what yeah. modal harmony actually means. It's not just looking at the chords. You can't just look at a page and say like, oh, this is going to sound functional or this is going to sound modal. It really depends on yeah. the, the kind of way that it is played. Um, all right, but moving back to um, our modal scales. So we talked about Ionian. So what's next? When we move the C in the bass to the D, what happens then? So we get, that brings us to Dorian, which I mentioned earlier, which is, it's like the minor scale, but with a raised sixth or with a major sixth. Uh, so that gives you sort of, like I said, it's almost, it, to me, it feels more like a folky sound. Like, like it feels sort of minor without being sad, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's like, it doesn't, especially because it has the, it has that four major chord that feels really bright and feels like a, it's an interesting contrast to the one minor. Uh, and that that's a, a, one of the big things in Dorian is the one minor to four major sound. Uh, and so you all, and they get back to the, to the five minor or to whatever, but uh, you get this sort of, like I said, minor but not sad. And you also it gives you a way to sort of walk up the scale because I talked last time about modal interchange and about using borrowing chords to avoid playing diminished chords, and you can do that sort of just by being in Dorian. So if you go like one, two, three, four as chords in minor, you hit that two diminished, and that can sound weird. But in Dorian, you get the one minor, two minor, flat three major, four major which gives you sort of a nice, a smoother slide up because you don't have that tritone in there. And then, of course, the one thing with Dorian that I, when I'm writing in Dorian, which I've done uh, a fair amount, actually, it's one of my favorite scales to write harmonies in, uh, but the six chord is a six diminished, and I, I basically never use that. It just, it sounds, it sounds really weird, and it doesn't do anything. And I think... It's not going anywhere. Yeah, it's not going anywhere, but it's also not, it can't sit with itself, Yeah. but it's also not helping you do anything else. So if you're writing in Dorian, I recommend trying to avoid that chord as much as, and if you find a situation where you think it sounds good, use it. I'm not, I'm not saying don't use it if you like it, but like, I tend to avoid it. And I think that that's probably in a, in a lot of modes, actually, for everything we talk about, each of these modes is going to have a diminished triad in it. Mm. And for the most part, in most of those situations, it's probably best to just avoid it. True. Like, not all of them, but, like, in a lot of cases, if you have a diminished triad it, in a weird place in your scale, it's just going to sound weird. So that would be just something to quickly keep in mind when you're doing these modes. Absolutely. Now I'm going to, um, again, so the scale, um, looks like this. It's one, two, flat, three, four, five, six, 
flat seven, and then the octave. Meaning it's exactly like minor, it's exactly like Aeolian. The one difference that it has is that six, and we have a major six instead of a minor six, yeah. which means that the four chord, and this is kind of the most important chord if you want to establish that mode, you want to hit the four chord, is a major chord instead of a minor chord. Yeah. So that's the big sound. If you play um, a one minor and then a four major, that sounds like uh, Dorian. Yeah, that, now, that is Dorian. That's the Dorian progression. Yeah. So the way that I memorized the name of this scale or that I used to memorize it in the beginning was, um, first of all, the D, like if I'm in C major, like if I'm, if I'm using the notes from C major, then, well, D is where Dorian begins. So D, Dorian helps like with the, that alliteration. Yeah. And then secondly, um, for me, it has a very kind of noble quality. It has something medieval to it for me. So, yeah. um, so that's why, um, I remember it as Dorian gray, which is just like, I mean, it's a completely different era, but Dorian gray yeah. is like, it, it's old, right? It has that noble yeah. kind of sound I mean, to it. Like the that's thing what with I'm mnemonics thinking. is you just need something that works. Exactly. It doesn't have to make any sense. Yeah. But so that, that's it's, what, how I remember it. Dorian is, comes yeah. from Dorian gray. So old, yeah. it has that noble kind of quality to it. And, um, yeah, yeah I think that's, um, pretty much. All I think I have to say about Dorian, yeah. I use it for, um, yeah, as you said, if I want something that's sad but not really sad, then I'm probably going to use Dorian. Uh, I, for, for jazz, I think it's a great scale. Instead of using Aeolian, I'll often uh, whip out uh, Dorian just because it has, it just sounds a little bit jazzier to me. And I think it is yeah. that minor, major over minor kind of thing. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, part of it, part of that is just like, uh, so when you're, I, or I, I may be wrong, but when you're doing um, sort of chord scales, which is using a chord for a specific scale and uh, using a scale for a specific chord, sorry. Um, you know, so you're playing over a specific chord. Uh, again, notes a half step above a chord tone are going to sound more tense. Mm -hmm. And so those are usually what's called avoid notes. So like in major, for instance, if you're playing C major over a C major seven chord, you probably don't want to spend a lot of time on the F. Like, that's just going to sound weird because the band is playing an E. Yeah. And the thing with Dorian is that Dorian doesn't have any of those. And it does, I mean, the thing, the major sixth is a tritone away from the flat third, so that sort of gives you some rub there. And it's still technically, like, if you look up avoid note charts, it's going to tell you avoid the major sixth in Dorian. As, oh, don't, you can play it, you just don't want to sit on it over the chord. But uh, I, I tend to think that, the tritone away thing is a lot more palatable. Absolutely. And so you can sort of get away with it in a way that you can't really get away with playing the flat six over a minor seven chord and just hanging on that. That's going to sound really, really unpleasant in a way that the major six, I don't think is as much. Oh, uh, well, I mean, you know, you have a lot of, uh, in, in, in jazz harmony, you kind of use the D minor six a lot. Actually, that's like a really established sound in jazz. Um, yeah. I mean, there's always yeah, the, yeah, the risk of it sounding a little bit too much like um, minor seven flat five. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because like, yeah, because it's an inversion. If you start that chord on the six, um, then you get that minor seven flat five chord, which is also why it sounds so tense because it's got that tritone, as you said, yeah. between the third and the six. Uh, which becomes the tritone between the the root note of that other chord, or the first note of the the the, the half diminished chord, and the fifth. Yeah. So um, that's why it sounds so tense because there's a, a half diminished chord hiding uh, in that D minor six chord. But as I said, in jazz, say it's half a very, diminished. Yeah, half. I just I got this. I, yeah, I was taught when I was in college. They were like, "Look, some people call it half diminished, but you have to call it minor seven flat five. And I was like, "But half diminished is such a cool name. It's just <laughs> yeah, I love it, it sounds cooler." But like, you know, I, I've I've learned minor seven flat five. It's what I call it now. But there's just like for the longest time, they were like, "You, this is what it's called. Yeah. It's the minor seven <laughs> flat five. But some people are going to call it the uh, half diminished. And I was like, I, I want to call it that. I want to be one of those people. Yeah, yeah. We, but, at, uh, <laughs> at, at, at my conservatory, <laughs> they taught us, like, at Berkeley, they call it the minor seven flat five. We just call it the half diminished <laughs> chord just because yeah. it's easier. And, like, our yeah. symbol for it is also, like, the diminished symbol is, like, this, the circle, right? And half, yeah. half diminished is just the and circle just, with the strike through it, which is just so yeah. much easier to write than every time. So like, much easier. I just I like it a lot better. I just like yeah. I, I, I I did some programs at Berkeley, and then I did some others like uh, like out my actual degree, and so like I've spent a lot of time in like American schools, being like it's the minor seven flat five, yeah. <laughs> and I just 
I'm jealous in my point. <laughs> well, I mean, it, to me, it's, it's got that same kind of sound. You know, it's it's still yeah. a diminished kind of sound. It's just like the seven is a little bit uh, the the yeah. yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah, and it sort of emphasizes that it's based on a diminished triad instead of based on a minor seven. It's more that's that's the chord it's closer to. I think. Yeah, exactly. Sound wise. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, back to Dorian. Yeah. Or um, I just got distracted. Is there anything more we want to talk about with Dorian, or should we move on to Phrygian? I don't think so. I mean, I think like I said, that that main thing is like headline Dorian minor, but not sad. As I think that's all. That's all you get from this. That's really all you need. Cool. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's move on to what happens if you play an E in the left hand while you know playing a C major scale in the right hand. That's yeah. going to sound like Phrygian. And uh, Phrygian is, I remember that because it sounds a little bit like fridge, and a fridge is made of metal, and Phrygian is, you know, <laughs> is a metal scale. <laughs> Dude, I mean, Why? some of these are it worse. Works. It works. It know. works. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever works. Um, yeah, no, so I mean, Phrygian is like, for me, is the metal scale, or it's also something yeah, uh, yeah. for Spanish folklore. It has like this really yeah. dark kind of character. Yeah, sort of a, a Spanish classical sound as well. It's just, you know, it, but it's the, the big thing is, it, did did you go through the scale degrees yet? I, anyway, uh, it's no, we, I Phrygian. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Phrygian is, uh, it's the minor scale, but with a flat two. So one flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. So that, and then eight, obviously there's an octave. It has an octave, but, uh, so you, a, but, uh, if you have this, um, like, like you said, it's a metal scale. It's, 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 and that, that's a lot of where I use it is sort of what, what I think of, cause I write a lot in minor. I like minor. I, that's sort of, that's what I'm more interested in. So for the most part, I'm usually, if I'm writing harmonies, I'm writing in Dorian. But if I'm writing riffs, if I'm writing just like lines or just like shredding or anything like that, I almost always write in Phrygian. It just, it has that, like that half step between, above the root gives you, one thing you can do with that is just like a, a a trill where you like hit the root and then like move up a half step and move back down. And it has this really cool sound. You can even just add like one uh, flat two, one flat seven, one gives you this really like Can you say that again a little bit slower? Uh, so one flat two, one flat seven, one. So like up a half step and then down a whole step. Yeah. And then back to where you're starting each time. Right. That's like so a that typical you... riff kind of for, for metal music. Yeah. Like da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Yeah. Yeah. Or you, like, even like if you're like at the end of your riff or whatever, you can just add that in to add a little bit of extra to extend it a little bit. And it's just, I mean, it, it, it always makes me think of System of a Down, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's it's a very characteristic sound of System of a Down, and uh, but that I, I love that sound. And I, for harmonies, I don't think of Phrygian a lot. I mean, it has the flat two major, which is cool, um, and the flat seven minor is another one that you can sort of use that has an interesting sound. Uh, but the the third thing that it winds up with is a five diminished chord, and that's makes it I, like when I'm thinking harmonies, that's a really weird thing to use. Just Again, you know, if you have diminished chords in weird places in your scale, they're just going to sound weird. And the five diminished is, it's a classic sound in Phrygian. I don't tend to use it very much, but, uh, but like I said, when I'm writing Phrygian, I'm not usually thinking harmonies very much. I'm thinking melodies and like riffs and stuff like that. Absolutely. And so the other example that I was talking about is the Spanish folklore is like the like that kind of thing. Yeah. That was like the, you know, um, rascardos on guitar. I think that's what it's called. Um, so we're like, you have like that kind of sound. Um, so that's kind of like how I know it. Um, like that's how I learned it first. And what you said, I think is very true that, um, the Phrygian scale, for chords doesn't really serve as the harmonic backbone it's more like it gives you the root notes of power chords typically because yeah. usually what happens is that um so even with that 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 sort of spanish kind of thing that i just sang even yeah. then like you don't even uh, typically how that's played is you start on a on a, like for example the easiest way to play it on guitar let me let me just play it real quick so <laughs> i think that's easiest so this is this is what i mean Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> so that kind of thing. Yep. So that sounds very frigid, even though, what's the first chord? I think my guitar is a little bit out of, out of tune, but it's an <laughs> E major chord. So, yeah. um, 
Oh, wait, there we go. So it it kind of builds the chords upon that upon the root notes of the like on the on the notes of that scale. It uses them as root notes for the different chords, yeah, but, then, but it doesn't like really use the rest of the harmony. And I think that's true for a lot of things in Phrygian and yeah. uh, especially the five. Yeah, look at the four five chord is usually is not a, played as a diminished chord. It's usually just played as a power chord, which means a yeah. power chord always has a, like a natural five, which means that they're sort of negating the fact that there should be yeah, a flat five. But it's yeah. When they're going there, it's just it's just easier. So and then you know when you look at like metal and stuff, that's all power chords, like because so they have so much distortion that you know if they're playing anything, you know, else, even yeah. just playing like major chords or like minor or whatever, it's just it's gonna sound really messy. Yeah. So like they, it is like you said, very much just power chords if 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 it's chords at all. Yeah. And what I've found like, is is also that uh, Phrygian in in metal music or in actually most styles that I've come across so far is used like minor, like Aeolian. With just with that sort of flavor flavor chord of like the flat two chord, like flat yeah. two uh, power chord usually, but it isn't yeah. really used as a scale of its own. Like the sounds of that scale, even for melodies, I often find that they're just singing Aeolian over it. So they they're singing like a uh, a major second instead of singing a, a yeah. flat second, you know, like a minor second. Yeah. Um, so it's often yeah. it's just used in that way where you throw in that flavor chord from Phrygian, and that's what I call Phrygian. Like, but it, it's really not if you think about it. Yeah, and the, and the one thing that sort of comes to mind in, when I think of Phrygian chords is the Neapolitan scale, which is mm-hmm. basically like harmonic minor but with Phrygian. And so there's or there's two different versions. There's what's called Neapolitan minor, which is harmonic minor but with a flat two. Could, you, could you say that? Ne- could you say the notes of that scale? Okay, so um, one flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, and then a major seven. Oh. So it's like harmonic minor with the flat six and then major seven. And then there's also what's called Neapolitan major, which actually is still a minor scale, which is sort of weird, but um, that's like melodic minor, but with the flat two. So one, two, flat three, four, five, major six, major seven. Yeah. But and those those sort of give you a bit more of again again they're sort of they give you some functional harmony in Phrygian because they give you that leading tone back and they were used a lot in the music of Naples and that's why they're called the Neapolitan scales and wasn't it so. I think it was also used in um in that song that everyone knows from Pulp Fiction like the da 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 da, da. I think that's that scale um. And I know because that was uh, part of our entrance exam at a conservatory. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm thinking keep them separated, which isn't actually that scale, but that's just what's playing in my head instead. So I might but, be totally uh, wrong about this because that's just you know, what I wrote down, but I think I got that one cor- <laughs> correctly. I'm not sure anymore. Maybe I, I, I'm thinking of a completely different song, so I can't, <laughs> couldn't tell you. <laughs> um, all right. So anyways, that's uh, Phrygian. Anything else you want to say about that? Uh, not really. I think that's, that's basically covers it. Is use it for riffs and melodies more than exactly. for chords, probably. Yeah. So the next scale is a super useful one, though. That's one uh, yeah. that you hear tons of in pop music, um, especially in kind of like in pre-courses, if you want to, if you want to call it that, um, yeah. or like just for verses. Like it's just a really, really useful kind of scale, and it has a very distinct sound. What I'm talking about is Lydian, um, and uh, Lydian. Is uh, I remember it from um, lyre. Is that is that the word for the for the instrument? Yeah. So yeah. Um, it is it is a very dreamy scale, and I just imagine like an angel sitting on a cloud just playing a lyre. You know, it's because so Lydian. I don't know. That's how I remember it. Yeah. But it's it got works. this very kind yeah. of. You see, that makes more sense to you than the fridge example for some yeah. reason. It's been yeah. It's it's been so long that I actually can't remember any of the mnemonics I use. Yeah. It's just like these, I've been doing these for like a decade and it's just in my head, it's like, oh, Lydian's the one with sharp four. It's like, there's, there's no like interim steps anymore, but it's interesting to hear like yeah. what works, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I'd certainly use them back when I was in school. You know? Yeah. I yeah, just, yeah. It's, it's just, I can't remember. Yeah. I wish I could, but. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I would have loved to hear your <laughs> mnemonic. Um, anyways, so, so it's, as I said, it's a very dreamy kind of heavenly yeah. kind of, um, uh, very floating kind of sound. And uh, yeah. so the, ma- the the scale looks like this. It's basically the major scale, Ionian scale, with a raised four. So it's one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven. Right? And all of those yeah. intervals are major intervals. So the two, th- yeah. the two, three, six, and seven are all major yeah. intervals. Um, so yeah, that, what about it, the five? What's that? 
I, I said, what about the five? I was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So, so that's, that's the scale. And it, as I said, it has a very sort of um, weird kind of dreamy kind of vibe. And that is, I think, mostly because we don't have that avoid note anymore. So the four yeah. we can now actually use. The sharp four is is not just a yeah, half that's... step above one of the core tones. So that makes it usable for us. And if we use it, yeah. it has has that very dreamy kind of sound. And you hear it in a lot of jazz pieces at the end when they're like resolving back to one that they'll just... So, for example, if they're ending on a C major chord in the left hand, they'll play like a D major in the right hand which has that. So that's, yeah. first of all, the D major consists of the nine. So the D is the nine of the C major chord. Then we have that F sharp, which is the sharp four in of C major. And then we have an A, which is, you know, a six. That doesn't really yeah. matter. That's kind of like a substitution yeah, for six. the major seven. But um, yeah. the important part is that C major in the left and D major in the right hand, which is going to be tough to play on guitar if you're playing along, sorry, um, <laughs> is that that's kind of like a typical chord for for jazz pianists to end on because yeah. it has that very dreamy kind of vibe and it, it's a, a nicer way of ending a song than just ending like on a c chord because it just sounds a little bit boring it has a little yeah. bit more spice to it yeah and the two minor is definitely it's the classic lydian sound really is oh, not two major two major i said two minor i wow i'm saying all <laughs> the wrong chords but <laughs> no the two major is just it, it to me is like if I'm if I mean if I'm using it for, I use Lydian more for melodies as well in, in that sort of way. But if I'm if I'm doing Lydian harmony, it's just the two major is everything. That's just what it's all about. And theoretically, you can sort of do like the seven minor as well, which is an interesting sound. But it's not. It doesn't feel like as big as the two major. The two major is just what is. I'm just repeating myself, but you know what I mean. Absolutely, it, just, it is the Lydian sound because I think I mean it is. It is a major scale, um, and the way that typically it is used for is to have like a very positive, as I said, like dreamy kind of atmosphere. And so, if you throw in a minor chord, it just kind of takes away from that experience. I find so typically when I'm writing Lydian, it is going to be a chord progression. Like for example, in uh, so in F Lydian, that would be F. G and then maybe C or something like that. Or a typical chord progression for uh, for a pre-chorus might be F, G, F, G, or maybe um, F, G, C, G, or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how I see it. And uh, anything yeah. else you want to say about that? I mean, so the one thing is, because we've been, I've been talking a lot about the uh, the diminished chords, and here I think besides major and minor, I think Lydian has one of the most usable ones. Uh, it's, it's a little weird, but it's just because it's the sharp four diminished mm -hmm. and sort of like it, it, a lot of what makes a lot of these diminished chords weird, weird is that they don't point anywhere useful. And I think the sharp four diminished wants to resolve to the five. Yeah. And so that gives it almost like a secondary dominant feel. And so if you're writing and again, you, you don't have to do the do Lydian with a functional mindset. It's not necessary, but if you are. That is sort of something you can do, and that that's a tool that's available. Whereas in a lot of the other ones, like again in Dorian, the you, the sixth diminished is almost never the right decision. And so, I mean, again, not never, but not usually. Whereas in Lydian, the sharp four diminished is something you can actually use to resolve to the five, and then that five can go wherever you want your five to go. But you can also sort of use the two major as a substitute for the four if you don't want to have that really strong diminished sound that's another option yeah very good anything else you wanted to say about it because i think we have to move along a little bit because time yeah we've been is a running fast uh, um yeah we've been on this call for yeah. like 50 minutes <laughs> yeah. and we're only halfway through the most exactly but i mean but, aeolian and low korean we don't really have to talk about so i think it's um yeah i think it's two more scales really mixolydian and yeah. aeolian a little bit probably so mixolydian yeah. is the next scale so that happens when you play a g in the left hand c major scale in the right Mixolydian. Um, I rem I how did how did I remember that? Because um, it's, uh, I mean, it's a very sexy scale. So sexy mixo kind of just <laughs> makes sense to me, and it has a very, um, it's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's like a, I don't know. I, yeah. That's kind of how I remember it. Sexy yeah. mixo just kind of makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So me go ahead. Uh, so mixolydian, I don't, I don't even know exactly why it's why it has the word Lydian in it because to me it sounds very different than Lydian. Uh, it has, as I said, it's very sexy, very kind of a, a dirty, funky kind of scale um, that I'll use especially when I'm trying to write something. As I said, well, sexy, something like uh, a sexy R and B piece that's fun, like something like James Brown or something like that. If I want anything bluesy, some some bluesy undertones to my songs, like that's definitely the scale that I'll use. 
And, and so the so the intervals of that, just uh, so people know, are Great. it's like the major scale but with a flat seven. So it's one major second, major third, then four, five, major sixth, and then minor seventh. And so the thing to me that stands out there in terms of how I think of Mixolydian is that if you look at just the the seven chord, seventh chord built on the root, you have one, three, five, flat seven, which is a dominant seventh chord, which means that to me sort of Mixolydian has almost a built-in directionality to it. And that can sometimes not necessarily make it hard to write in, but it sort of is a, is a thing to keep in mind, at least for me when I'm writing in Mixolydian, that like it's always sort of pointing somewhere. And because it's it's the scale you're playing in, it's not really pointing anywhere clearly, but it sort of has that in the back of your listener's mind. And the other thing is that it's, very, it's it a very flat, unresolved yeah. kind of scale. Like it feels very yeah. tense the entire time. Like you never get yeah. that feeling of like ah, resolution. No, but it's always like if it comes back to the home chord, the, so the tonic chord, it always yeah. has the really tense kind of flat seven in there, which means it has a it has a um, a, a tritone in the tonic chord, yeah. which is which means there's never really any resolution there. And so, and so one thing, the, the other thing that I tend to think about when I'm thinking is it's almost to me sort of the least functional of the modes, except for Locrian. Locrian doesn't count, but, um, Never counts. because, you know, functional harmony is sort of, it's a, it's based on the major scale and it's also very based on the leading tone, which is the major seventh, which is a half step below the root. So you have this, this one note that's super important. And if you just take the major scale and you move that note, so it can't do its job anymore then you have Mixolydian. That's that's the only difference between Mixolydian and Major is that Mixolydian doesn't have a leading tone, so it sort of feels almost like aggressively non-functional to me, yeah. if that makes sense. So you can sort of use things like the 5 minor, like the flat 7 major, to sort of give yourself a sense of not being in a functional context very easily when you're writing in Mixolydian. Yeah. So um, one way I'll use the Mixolydian scale a lot is... Um, and I'm not necessarily often, I'm not necessarily drawing my chords from Mixolydian. If I really want to sound bluesy and kind of sexy. So blues, the, the yeah. blues structure looks typically looks like this. You get, uh, so if, if we're in C, it would be C7 four times. So four bars of C7, then we get two bars of F7, then two bars of C7. And then it's typically F, uh, G7, F7, C7, G7, right? So let's yeah. say that again. So it's four bars of one two bars of four, two bars of one, and then it's five, four, one, five. Now, the interesting thing here you might have realized is that um, if, if we're in Mixolydian, it would make sense for that C chord to be a C major seven chord, but we're actually playing a C seven chord. So um, again, this is kind of a scale that we're kind of using more for flavor. We're not really using the chords from that scale, typically, if we're playing that scale. Uh, especially if you want it to sound bluesy, but um, we're just building seven chords on pretty much every note of the scale. Um, so it, j it just gets that really tense kind of sound that way. And I think if you're using any other chords, yeah. it, it kind of loses that tension. So that's why blues is is such an interesting kind of genre because it only uses seventh chords, only uses that dominant yeah. sound. It has a lot of tension and therefore it is very kind of sexy and tense. Yeah, it, it, it never feels at rest. It keeps, no matter where you are, it feels like you want to go somewhere else. Is sort of how I tend to think about the 12-bar blues pattern. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so that's kind of how I, if I want to write something really sexy, I'll use a lot of dominant chords. Um, and then there's the other way of, of thinking about it is, like, for example, for pre-chorus, what you'd often find is something, again, like 5, 4, 1, 5. And, I mean, you can you can argue yeah. that that's not even uh, Mixolydian. I tend to see it like that. For me, it's, like, what the chord progression starts with that sort of gives the flavor for the rest of the chord progression. That's my personal experience of um, what it makes me feel like. Because a five four one five doesn't sound to me like Ionian. It sounds like it has a lot of tension. Like just because yeah. it starts on that five chord, this is a, an entire section that wants to go somewhere, and it's something that I use quite a lot for. And, and you know, I'm analyzing this artist for the next artist series right now, and uh, she I will not spoil who it is. Ooh, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she also does this quite a lot. So in the verses. Uh, yeah. She'll have like this really kind of, really kind of standard chord progressions like uh, six, four, one, five. You know, very, very standard stuff. 
and the pre-courses she'll go to like um, and i can actually pull up one of her songs right now so for example like four six five five is one of her pre-courses or what else we got what's this one four one um so she's got there's a couple of examples here's one four six yeah. five three um here's another one five six four four so it's you know it, it, i'm imagining someone just like writing these down and going to look up yeah. all the songs with these and try and cross reference <laughs> to figure out who you're talking i about. think you're gonna have a hard time because those chords are used like all <laughs> yeah, over yeah those are not they're probably not the best chord progressions to try and cross, <laughs> cross reference they're everywhere yeah exactly so um so it's a very typical thing for pre-chorus to to start that section not on the on the on the one not in an ionian scale but yeah. start it in a lydian or even better yeah, mix on, on the four scale. or the five yeah, yeah. exactly that's no yeah, that's really common and you, you see that with choruses too where you sort of you know you, you may even just end the free chorus on the one chord and it's like okay here's a moment of rest and then boom we're starting on the four or starting on the five right. or something like that that gives it taylor swift like, does oh, that this a lot section well. is happening yeah yeah yeah, and that, that's a pretty common thing too. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, you know, going to the relative key, like, uh, wait, is it relative or parallel? Uh, the parallel, parallel. I think because it's it, it's exactly the other way around in German, which is why it's super confusing to me. <laughs> so, um, right. Yeah. To make sure we're on the same page, if you're on, playing in C major for the verse, where would you be talking about going A minor. to? A minor. That that's relative. Okay. Relative. Right, that, that, that that's the system I'm used to. Right. Apparently, it makes it's more sense to in, me because it's yeah. it's related to that yeah. chord, but it's parallel doesn't yeah. make much sense. In yeah, German, par- it's exactly the other way around. It just it really <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Uh, so how did this bit. all start? How did we get here? Uh, we were. How did this all start? We were talking about par- <laughs> moving to the relative minor, I think. Right. So that yeah, like that that's a very common move as well to like go for in another section to move to a different um kind of mode and to start like to, to yeah. move the bass to a different note basically for the first chord. Yeah. Um and so yeah, like you know, mixolydian or even lydian are very typical kind of scales for pre-courses as well because they're not they don't feel as resolved as uh lydian. Yeah. So, because they don't have that li- that leading tone, well, you know, Lydian does, yeah. but it's it's a different kind of thing. It sounds more floating. It doesn't have that real sense yeah. of finality. Yeah, it doesn't have the tritone between exactly. the leading tone and the fourth degree. Yeah. Neither of them do. Exactly. So that's uh, Mixolydian. Anything else you wanted to say about that? Yeah, I mean, as the only quick thing is probably try and avoid the three diminished. You know, it's that's again, it's not a really, and you you can use it again. You, the, not going to tell anyone not to use chords that sound good to them, but it's not a great sound, you know? Yep. Yeah. In general, Most I try to time. stay away from diminished chords when I'm writing pop music. I just like, yeah. Oh yeah. For pop. Certainly. Yeah. If I want something tense, I'm just going to use the, the dominant yeah. chord, like the yeah. below it basically, because it yeah. kind of, it has two notes in common with that diminished chord, but it just sounds a little bit poppier. Yeah. It just feels more, ha- has more weight and stability. Yeah, exactly. So before we talk about Aeolian, our last scale let's talk about the seventh so what happens when you play a b in the left hand and then a c major scale in the right hand that's called locrian and uh in germany uh locus means uh shit house so um so that's kind of how i remember it because it does kind of sound like shit um yeah yeah, yeah we're not wrong <laughs> it's uh it's a scale that like i think I re- the first time i read about it was in like in a music theory book and it said like just don't ever use it no one ever uses it people tried <laughs> experimenting with it and nothing good ever came out of it and it's kind of yeah. true like writing something that makes sense in locrian is just really really difficult yeah if you really stick yeah. very closely to the scale because it has a flat and five so it's so the scale is basically yeah. um uh, minor uh, but then with a flat two and a flat five, so it's one flat two, flat three, four, flat five, flat six, flat seven. Yeah, and it's and the, the thing with that to me is you know, we've I've been talking this entire time about the diminished chords and like how you know if they wind up in a weird place, but here the diminished chord is the one. It's the one chord. He just <laughs> if you don't play the diminished chord, you're never playing the root of the key, and you're just playing a different scale. Like it's, yes, it's never. It's the one chord, and it sounds like I I don't want. I don't want to say it sounds terrible. I always try and always try and maintain sub, uh, subjectivity on this sort of thing, where it's like if it sounds good to you, that's cool, use it. But it doesn't sound good to a lot of people. Yep, that's uh, that's that's all I'm going to say on. Again, I think Locrian is sort of similar to Phrygian in that it's often more useful for riffs, and so you you can sort of like. I mean, Rob Zombie uses it a lot. I think from what I've seen, he'll, he'll use like the tritone a lot and get get those sorts of sounds because that's. He's, he's not playing more than one note at a time, so it's fine. It doesn't really matter that, you know, if you were to play that chord, it would sound terrible because 
he's not playing the chord. He's just going like one flat two five or one flat seven, uh, one flat two flat five. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and just doing doing those sorts of things as riffs, and they they sound good, but like it's just it's not a skill you can build a harmony out of unless you like really unpleasant harmonies. It is a true kind of horror scale, which is why it makes a lot of yeah. sense that Rob Zombie uses it because it is. He, I mean, he is a horror film director, um, yeah. and it just makes a lot of sense. It's a fear. It's a very fear inspiring kind of scale. And so yeah. that's that's when I would use it, if, especially if I'm you know scoring like a movie or something like that. Then that's definitely a scale that I would use. It's a very very yeah. dark kind of scale. Uh, but even then, I probably, as you as you said, wouldn't play the full one chord. I probably would just play the root note or even play a power chord instead, and just get that low Korean feel from hitting like a flat five power chord. But I wouldn't really be thinking about like you know what's the proper chord here? Is this supposed to be major yeah. or minor or diminished or whatever? I would probably just play power chords over those over those notes. Yeah, I might maybe do like just thirds too is another thing you can do. It's like the one and the flat three, but not the flat five, yeah. and then you can go to the flat five and the flat seven. But and you can sort of move move those thirds around without really being stuck with the whole whole chord. Is is one way that you can sort of do some harmony in Locrian without doing harmony in low korean you know the, well, the way i would use low korean is as a flavor to phrygian which itself is a flavor to aeolian so it's kind of that's so that's kind of i use it i think uh it doesn't really make sense to talk much more about it because most people won't ever use the scale anyways yeah it's unless you're doing like film scoring or more yeah. classical stuff it's just it's not even cl a lot of classical stuff depending on the era it's not going to come up very much it's just not really a thing people use that often i like i like it for riffs but that's basically most of what it gets used for exactly so let's move on to our last scale which is what happens when we play an a in the left hand and the c major scale in the right hand that's a aeolian so um aeolian yep. as you may know is just another word for minor and the scale is one two flat three four five flat six flat seven so um yeah i mean it's just minor you've heard of this before you know the yep. effects it has it's a kind of a sad scale Re i mean i use it sometimes if i want to sound ironic or sarcastic as well it can work really well for that for humor if you want to go uh, overboard it can also be really practical if you're playing something super dramatic minor is for me the perfect scale for that because it's a very very dramatic scale oh, yeah. yeah um like tim minchin or uh bo burnham do this a lot that they'll play some extremely like also in the low register of the piano some really really dark and sort of dramatic chords and then sing some bogus lyrics over it you know how would you use it i i don't tend to think very modally when i'm doing minor i like honestly most of the time when i'm doing minor harmonies i'm actually doing dorian i just i like dorian better huh. so I, interesting that usually is sort of what i wind up doing instead but uh what if i'm if i am doing minor i'm often thinking sort of again more functionally and you know obviously natural minor aeolian itself doesn't really function very effectively although you do have the flat seven dominant which is sort of a substitution for the five as well uh you can sort of use that to resolve to the one almost like a deceptive cadence yeah. which we talked about earlier the five going to six minor except it's resolving to the one so it's the flat seven resolving to one minor yeah. and so you can sort of get a deceptive cadence feel out of that which is and it's called a backdoor resolution, uh, or at least that's what jazz people call it, or at least the ones I know. Yeah, flat seven to one again. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's, I mean, uh, one thing that I think is interesting in Aeolian is you can get that sound. But it, again, a lot of if I'm writing in minor, I may be borrowing from harmonic minor, or I may be writing in Dorian. But it's it's more more in that functional realm. The other thing is, if I'm not doing functional stuff, I'm often doing stuff like we talked about last week, uh, last month, uh, chromatic median, stuff like that, mm -hmm. where I might go from like one minor to say like six minor or one minor to flat six minor or something like that, that gets sort of a more, again, less modal, less like here's the scale I'm in, here's all the sounds in that scale and more just like here's a soundscape that's a little more exactly ambient ambiguous like those sorts of things I, I don't tend to do a lot of writing that's just like here's the sound of minor by itself that's not really something that's a lot of my repertoire yeah so um let me ask you this what do you think is the saddest minor scale are you looking for a spinal tap joke or are you looking for <laughs> an yeah. academic yeah, I'm, answer? I'm actually, I'm actually serious. Like what would you use if you wanted to write something that is like depressing? You wanted to write something that is really, really sad. Sad. I'd probably use, probably use natural minor. I think Phrygian sounds too evil and Dorian sounds too bright. Yeah. So I think natural minor sort of hits that sweet spot where it's more, 
just sad. Yeah, and I it's agree. not it's not it's not like Phrygian where it's like, okay, now I'm fighting a video game boss or yeah. like now we're dealing with like Dracula or something. Yeah. And you know, not necessarily that can't be, but you know, something that's like, okay, this is this is dark, this is evil. But if it if I'm just trying to write like a song about loss, a song about Exactly like, like something like that. Dorian's not sad enough and mm, Phrygian is just again, it's evil. It's it's too dark. Yeah. It's not sad. And so I, I would probably lean of the three of those. I'd probably lean more towards natural minor. Absolutely. If I was doing that. Uh, I completely agree with you. And uh, the thing that makes it sound depressing to me, if I want to, if I want to sound depressed with my music, then I'd really like play with the flat six, which has a lot of rub with the five, like of the tonic chord. Yeah. Um, I just love that, that little rub of the flat six to the five. And it's something we've heard, you know, Marilyn Manson use and I've talked about it in the 21 pilots video that that's a really yeah. interesting kind of rub there because yeah. I love crazy train it's, is the one that, yeah, it's a, it's a really, that always comes to mind for me. Which one? The crazy train, the opening riff for crazy right. train. Yeah. Uh, one, one, five, one flat six, one, five, one. That's just, that's always what I think of when I think five, uh, five to flat six. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, yeah it's, uh, no, I totally agree. The, the flat six to five is a great sound in minor and that, I mean, honestly, one thing that I actually now now that I'm thinking more about the the sadness question, one thing that I do a lot that I, the, or not a lot, but one thing that I do when I'm trying to do sadness is sometimes I'll write a major harmony, but write the melody as if it's minor. So sort mm. of like uh, that might be again in in Phrygian or something. I might play like C major, but build a melody around E and sort of play it like like the harmony is clearly it's in C major, but the uh, the melody is is this and that sort of gives you this disconnect between the two mm -hmm. and that's and that's a little more i don't want to say advanced but a little more complex than just like what mode do you use but that that's another tool that i often find works great because especially if you're doing something about loss or whatever you want to convey the sense of what's lost as well as just that something was lost and that can be having that major sound uh but also being clearly a minor melody is a good way to do that as well cool yeah, super interesting. It, so that's just a random trick. Yeah. That I, I got I to yeah. admit, it sounds a little bit like one of those magician things. It has the magician <laughs> effect. I'm sure I'm going to try it later and yeah. be like, what? How does, how does he do that? Like, it just, get, you know, go, go home after you saw a magic performance, get, get out <laughs> your cards and you try to replicate what they did on stage <laughs> and you just ter yeah. fail terribly. I think that's probably what it's going to feel like for me. <laughs> Th those kind of tricks are really difficult yeah. to pull off we should probably yeah. say um yeah and if you're a beginner you should probably stay away from that as far as possible i actually had been thinking earlier today about a song that i wrote with that because i was going to talk about it in a video that i'm doing soon yeah. and so i was looking that back up and it sort of started in d major and this was for this is actually i said song but it was the thing that i wrote for a school assignment yeah. uh in in theory class and we it was supposed to be in d major or at least start in d major and you know, at, at the time, even more so than now, it was like, I don't like major. I'm just going to write in minor. It sounds sad and dark, and I like it because yeah. I'm a metal <laughs> kid, uh, which I still am, and I still love minor. But anyway, I was just was going in, and I was like, okay, we're going to do it. We're going to do write a chord progression in D because that's what he said. But, like, the melody is all, like, just F sharps, uh, F sharp to A, and then F sharp to C sharp, and all, all those sorts of, like, just sort of arpeggiating, like, F sharp minor triads and moving around to other places so it, it always sounds it's basically it's a melody written in f sharp minor even though it's a chord progression written or f sharp Phryg, uh phrygian even though it's a chord progression written in d major and i could sorry i could so see you coming into like the the teacher's office and being like <laughs> here I, I did the assignment that you asked for but Corey, the first three chords are D major, A seven flat nine, D minor. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it starts off yeah. in D major. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's, it's totally yeah. out. But no, it was actually the we were supposed to modulate from D to A flat, and we were doing like a thirty two bar jazz thing. Um, and we we had and obviously like D to A flat is a really hard thing to modulate to because there's tritone apart. And we had just learned about tritone substitutions, so looking back, that was definitely what we were supposed to do. Like we were definitely supposed to just use A7 and resolve it differently. Right. But instead, what I did was like this chain of like modulations through like D minor <laughs> to like F major to F minor. And then it's just like an F minor to A flat. <laughs> it, it worked. It sounded good. Oh, uh, just like I just imagined that paper and just like your teacher going, like, <laughs> Corey, what did you do? Just why? Did this go to Vince so simple? <laughs> He never said to use tritone substitutions. So <laughs> it's, it's just like innocent fault. shrug. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Guess it's another two hours for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, 
Yeah, I guess I was just, had been thinking about that. So that, that's another thing you can do because you were saying sort of uh, at the beginning, sort of play like a C minor scale. Think of it as C minor, but play a different chord in the root. Yeah. And you can sort of get that effect by literally just thinking of it not as like this is the third uh, mode of C minor, but oh, C major, but think of it this is C major, but I'm playing a D minor. And so I'm playing a C major melody over a D minor, and you can sort of think of your melody that way. And that gives you uh, a, some interesting ways to sort of combine the feels of modes. Yeah. Which I guess since since we're talking about sort of what each mode brings to the table, you can sort of what do the modes bring to each other is another interesting question that we probably don't have a lot of time for. Yeah, that has a lot to do with like upper structures and stuff like that, where yeah. we basically play different chords in the right than we play in the left. So as yeah. I, we, we briefly touched on this when we said you can play a C major in the left hand and a D major in the right hand, and that will have a very distinct kind of sound. And those basically bring two different scales to the table. So yeah, um, anything else you wanted to say about Aeolian? I think we've pretty much covered it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's basically it. And like on my prolonged diminished watch, uh, the two diminished sounds fine. You can totally use it to set up a five. That's That's one of the ones you can use. Yeah. Uh, since since I've been talking about the diminished chord in every single scale, right? Yeah, but you know, <laughs> might as well. It's just like might every time, well time I just, just, Corey, just shut up. No one cares about the dim, dim, diminished chord. <laughs> He's like, and hey, let's talk about the. Oh, I just. <laughs> I care about the diminished <laughs> chords. <laughs> yeah, you see, last time you said, like, that's your favorite chord, right? Yeah, so, um, and, uh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. Partly because uh, all the other chords, the major and the minor chords, you can always use them. They'll always work. So it's, it's sort of the one that you look at is like, do I actually have six chords in this scale or do I have seven? Yeah. And that's, that's I think, an important question to be asking when you're looking at scales. But I know I've been talking about diminished triads a lot. And <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I think we've covered everything anyone ever needs to know about modality and you won't uh, won't need to read any other books yeah. beside this like nothing ever <laughs> like this is the definitive guide there is no other information out there just at, at all exactly don't, don't google anything ever again that's that's my advice exactly so take this as the highest standard and everything else you're going to read from now on is just going to make you depressed yeah it's just pointless all right we're already way over time i'm trying to edit this down to like an hour or something like that but uh, we'll see if that yeah. works out but i think we yeah, uh we, this was a really interesting discussion i think uh this went yeah. really particularly well this time yeah this was fun um maybe and like i said i i I think the question of sort of looking at like scale colors as a quality thing is interesting and maybe we could do that in the future but we definitely we don't have time for that now yeah but maybe do put that off the, the sort of broader question of modality as opposed to modes for another time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was a really fun discussion. It was be- definitely better oh. than our second episode that we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't, they don't have to know about maybe that. Maybe I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna include like the edited down version of it. If that's all right with you, maybe we can maybe we can play that uh, for, for everyone right now. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we were both really tired. For yeah. me, I mean, we live on other sides of the world. So for me, it was very, very mm-hmm. late. And for Corey, it was very, very yeah. early uh, because that was like the only time that we could um, basically meet up at. Yeah. And so we're both super tired. Yeah. And uh, this is the edited down version of that episode. And enjoy. Hello, everyone. Freedom of Fit as a from Realistic Songwriting. And with me today is, again, Corey from 12 Tone. Hey, how you doing? And uh, today we are going to talk a little bit more about music theory. I was wondering with, with that, like, how do you how do you structure that? Are you looking for, like, how they uh, just just in relation to the key, in relation to the chord, in both? Like, what are you what are you looking for in that sort of sense? Um, try to keep it as vague as possible. That about covers it for me. Thanks for having me. Everyone, thanks for listening. Cheers, and see you next time. All right, so that was the uh, second episode of, uh, you know, the two of us talking. And as you can hear, like, um, it had to be edited down quite a bit. That was that was basically everything that was worth salvaging. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a reason that that episode never came out. But um, I think this one hopefully went yeah. a little bit better, and hopefully you could you guys could learn something. Yeah. So uh, thanks for listening. Corey, thanks for, uh, for doing this with me. Thanks as always. And... Uh, I shall see you again next month. Take care. 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 Take care.